Hello everyone, this is Daniel with Spectrum Center and for this session we're going to go over how to filter data from the table views available in the data store menu in Spectrum E. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and some of you may have uh, already used the data store in Spectrum E, but for those of you that haven't, I'm going to go over a little bit what this is and how we can uh, basically use the options available in the data store to filter and query information, as well as send information from the data store to other modules, such as the technical analysis module. So first, before we begin, we are going to create a network. Uh, there's a few ways to create a network. You can go to your home page and click My Networks. If you have access to the technical analysis module, you should have that option on your home page. But there's other ways to get to the network options is simply click on the network menu at the top. You'll get um, this display that shows network management. This is essentially the technical analysis module. Um, but what you can do if you're if you if you don't have the shortcut on your home page, but you do have the network tab, you can click on network and then click on the link at the top. This is your current network and it'll take you to the same page. And here, if you go toward the bottom, you'll see the option to create a new network. If you create a new network, hit create another network. These are basically workspaces that you can select and, and load again. Um, we have covered on how to manage these networks in uh, other uh, documentation and uh, in, in other uh, information about our product. Um, so I'm not going to spend too much time, but on that on this particular subject on uh, networks, but you can click on different ones and load your current network. And from there, you'll have information about, uh, you know, your, your network that you wish to model. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, this new one that I created called data store send to map. And I, I created a new one because I wanted something with nothing inside. As you can see, I scroll into the object type, um, combo box here there is nothing there are no everything's zero there are no objects no radio objects whatsoever so i'm going to now click on data store and you can see here i have right now i'm looking at the a geostationary object beams different tabs this is a data store that's essentially import from the uh, it brific the space uh, database srs database we'll get to this one in a moment but if i click on the top right here where I have the name of the data store, it takes me to this data store selector. And here I can pick a variety of different data stores that I have. So for different projects, we may supply different data stores that contain basically table views of information of interest. Uh, for now, I'm going to work on the BR uh, IFIC, the, the Bureau of Radio Communications International Frequency Information Circular. I'm going to click on that one. It's going to serve as a good base for uh, demonstrating the capabilities that I wish to uh, show today in this video. So here we'll start in this view. It's the FMTV tab. It summarizes all the FMTV emission data that's included in the BRIFIC. Um, you can see is 297,000. Uh, 227 records in total in this particular table view. So this would be something that I would probably want to parse down, filter down, because I don't really need to analyze this much information at once. And that would be very rare that you would analyze so much information. It'd be very specific cases where you'd want to do that. More often than not, you're trying to analyze uh, uh, less information than this at one particular time. So here I have a filter button, and this is, should be common to everyone that gets uh, a spectrum delivery. Sometimes the filter button, when you click on it, it opens up some different options. Um, but in general, what it should do is it should open up a search field on top of every column. And then it may as well open additional fields to enter in latitude and longitude coordinates or a distance in uh, kilometers, a radius distance in kilometers. And I'll highlight in a moment what that's for. In this particular case, because this particular repository is basically a listing of emission data, I have coordinates associated to each record. So the, co the coordinate fields here at the top would allow me to do a point and radius type search. 
So I can enter in my coordinates manually here if I wanted to. So I could say like 37.5 uh, if I want in decimal degrees. Uh, and then um, if let's say uh, I'm doing this in the in the in the eastern hemisphere, I would then put in let's say 41.18, just an example. Then I could filter my information. Now or another way I could filter this quicker is I just click on any one of these rows and then click on the little push pin icon here and it'll inherit those coordinates. So um, that's a quick way to do things. Again, remember to enter in the negatives. Um, if you're going uh, in the appropriate uh, hemisphere. So Eastern Hemisphere is going to be positive. Northern Hemisphere is going to be positive. Western Hemisphere is going to be negative. Northern uh, Southern Hemisphere is going to be negative. Um, so you've got a little tool tip that and it gives you some guidance on what uh, kinds of values to enter. Um, so that should help uh, people enter in information. And so then I'm going to enter in a radius. Let's say I put 150 as my radius and then I hit enter. It's going to filter down those 200 some thousand records to, down to the criteria that best fits. So that's a, a, a pretty interesting feature. It's very useful. You can see how fast that was. That's because of TLS is using a proprietary data rendering technology provided with Spectrumy to render the results of that query as quickly as possible. Um, and if I wish, I could then uh, continue to apply additional criteria. For example, uh, let's say I'm only interested in the uh, in the uh, in the emissions that are located in Warite. Enter that so it's going to I can combine criteria and then let's say I'm only interested in and this, here's a unique uh, uh, type of search criteria that I can combine. Let's say I want to enter in a range um, in one of these fields like frequency range. So in this case, I would say um, I'm going to enter in information in this kind of a syntax. So this is just an example. Don't you wouldn't actually run it like that in this case, but here I'm entering a, a bracket value. That's the, the minimum value pipe maximum value close bracket. So that's the syntax to use because these are numerical values. I would have to enter in numerical minimum and maximum uh, values where I have A and B, um, but that's the syntax. So let's say I, I want to search everything between uh, let's say 88 in 91, I won't put in that as my min and max criteria, it will apply that to the search. And I could have entered all of this at once. Uh, I could have entered in uh, neg 41.3 and 174.8, and this all in one time, and it would have filtered all of that down from the 200,000 some uh, uh, emissions that I had uh, in my table um, originally. So once I finished my filtering, I can go select the records, click on the drop down menu here, the kebab option. You'll see this appear throughout Spectrumy. It's the uh, it's known as the kebab. It's basically uh, allows you to hide some menu options so it doesn't clutter up the screen. So I'm going to go ahead, select all, and um, then I can send to map. If I click on send to map, it's going to open a box. It's going to ask me what kind of objects do I want to send these records as? And this, because they're FM objects, I'm going to say FM, click OK. And they appear here. They're off uh, here in New Zealand. You can see these little green, green boxes that just appeared. Seem to be some co located stations, perhaps. If I go to the network tab, I go to the FM. Uh, uh, object. I see two emissions there and they are in the same coordinate. If I want to map them, I click on map and here I can see more clearly where they're positioned. And then I can start to run various analyses. So I can do my coverages, I can do my interference calculations, point to point calculations. Now that I have that information in the technical analysis module. So that's uh, that's one example of how to use the technical analysis. I mean, the uh, data store option to to filter and query data quickly in a user friendly manner and combine that between your data store and your technical analysis module, your network page and your GIS. So that strings everything together. 
I'm going to do one more uh, example. This time I'm going to go back, click data store, click here. I'm going to use a different data store, a different data store. I'm going to use the SRS, what I had highlighted before, and I'm going to use the uh, GSO emissions tab. So here I have 1.6 million records. We're going to filter through this. We're going to use Australia again. And here I'm going to work a little better, a little differently. I'm going to write my criteria in differently. And as you notice, in this case, there is no center point and radius search. May not be applicable in this case. I'm just going to do a different type of search. I'm going to say I want a SAT B, I want all SAT B 160 East uh, emissions. So I'm going to enter in that criteria. And I see I have overall 264 records that match that exact criteria. I'm going to want to send them to my engineering module. One thing you'll notice right now, it's just displaying my first 30 records of the search, and it says there's 264 total. So I can always expand that, hit enter, and it may take a second to update, refresh, but then I can see all that. So by default, the software is only showing the first 30 records, but you can just extend that however you want. I would recommend not extending it in an unnecessary manner, meaning if you have a million records, there's no reason to ask the software to show you a million records in the table view. That might take a long time. Be practical. You know, you really you just run your, your query, your filters first and then see how many results you get and then extend your view accordingly. However, it is important to have all the records in the table view display before sending them, selecting them and sending them, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to send them. There's a slightly different feature instead of send to map. It's import emission in the case of the SRS. I click on that. It's automatically going to send these to the uh, uh, GSO uh, object in the uh, network page, the technical analysis module. So it takes a little longer to do that. It's going to the map, but let's look first in the network page. We go down to the GSO object. All 264 emissions are there. So we're going to go back, scroll out a little bit, and should have all the appropriate information. So we're going to see here is the OSSAT. So that's the geostationary uh, satellite object. It's located in that position. Now we're going to just do a quick little operation. Let's do select all. We're going to do uh, calculate downlink PFD, create one, we'll leave it at the default four kilohertz reference bandwidth. That was pretty quick. And here I'm able to generate a spot beam display over uh, Australia, I can toggle the threshold here if I want to lower or increase. I can play with these values. For example, let's say I want to raise this to 152. It'll slightly adjust my, my spot beam. Um, and uh, so that's a very quick way to filter information back and forth between the data store and the technical analysis module. The data store is used to hold a variety of different types of uh, table list information, uh, and th this can be from SQL server, database tables, to flat files, to uh, just about anything. Um, can support different database formats and so forth. Um, and so that's very compatible uh with other types of parts of the software such as the licensing module which would contain a listing of license data uh, you can view your license data in the data store and then send the technical parameter information directly to the engineering module in a very similar manner so uh that's uh that's also part of the spectrum e solution is to have everything contained all in one and not having to send information from one tool to another tool everything's contained within the same product and it's pretty it's seamless pretty much how you send information in between the two modules uh, or in this case three because you've got the engineering or technical analysis analysis module and the gis module and the data store which could be let's say the licensing or some other type of uh, storage of uh, information all connected with each other so that's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact our technical support, but I believe this uh, brief demonstration should have very clearly illustrated what is uh, capable uh, to be done with the uh, data store and the T-list uh, rendering and filtering options. Thank you very much.